on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about the top 10 funniest Monty Python sketches that I have never seen before. I, I know, although Monty Python is a British comedy group, they are famous enough that there are a, are a lot of huge American fans of Monty Python. And then there's Americans like me <laughs> who don't know anything about Monty Python. I feel like I missed the, the boat on this somehow. All I've heard of is the name, this name, Monty Python. I've heard that my whole life and I'm excited to finally see what the hype is all about. What is this all about? So I have here a little video that is gonna go over the top 10 funniest Monty Python sketches of all time. And you know, what better introduction to Monty Python than that, right? So let's take a look. Number 10, Dirty Hungarian Phrase Book, <laughs> Monty Python's Flying Circus. Okay. This was the 1970s, a time when everybody still smoked. As such, if you were heading abroad, you'd be in need of a robust phrase book that could help you buy cigarettes in a pinch. <laughs> what a pro, okay. What a premise. Uh, he's buying a phrase book so he can travel abroad and like buy cigarettes. <laughs> okay, interesting. <laughs> Will not buy this record, it is scratched. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will not buy this record, it is scratched. <laughs> Unfortunately, the phrase book in this famous sketch is anything but the Hungarian. <laughs> okay. The Hungarian has a phrase book trying to say English phrases. <laughs> okay. This is the most, this is the weirdest premise for a joke. I should have known because this is British comedy as well, which can be quite different to American comedy. Really leans into the absurd situations, which I, I like, I like quite a bit. Hungarian tourist, played by Cleese, visits a tobacconist, played by Jones, and employs his best translations. <laughs> Do you want to come back to my place, bouncy, bouncy? <laughs> That'll be six shillings, please. If I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? <laughs> Jones being... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like this. I enjoy this. Uh, this is this is just like a straight up sketch comedy. Um, I have to admit, the only thing I've ever heard of in my life for the longest time was Monty Python and the Holy Grail, and I thought that was actually the name of like that was it. And and it took a long time for me to know this was like a sketch comedy group. So this is this is actually quite fun to to see for the first time. British, he's relentlessly polite, even in the case of increasingly inappropriate phrases. <laughs> but when he tries to say something in Hungarian, he gets punched in the face. <laughs> uh, uh, you have beautiful thighs. <laughs> what? He hit me. Drop your panties, sir, Arthur. I cannot wait till lunchtime. <laughs> the phrase book's creator is later put on trial for intending to breach the peace. <laughs> but sometimes in life, your hovercraft actually is full of eels. My hovercraft is full of eels. <laughs> so, <laughs> I feel like a lot of these sketches are also got, like very, very quotable. Like the, the Monty Python quotes, I know, is a very popular thing for people to do. It's, there, it's like, they're like legendary. My hovercraft is full of eels. <laughs> Number nine, okay. always look on the bright side of life. Monty Python's Life of Brian. <laughs> it's the end of the film, and Brian, still mistakenly identified as the Messiah, <laughs> is being crucified following an abortive attempt to rescue him. <laughs> what is this? This is... <laughs> okay. This, this is like... This guy, Brian, uh, is getting, like, um, put to death. Like Jesus Christ. And they've turned it into a sketch. A comedy sketch. Okay. Cheer up, Brian. You know what they say? Some things in life are bad. <laughs> they can really make you mad. Other things just make you swear and curse. Brian, played by Chapman, is serenaded by fellow criminal Eric Idle. Always look on... <laughs> I feel like this probably offended a lot of, uh, like, <laughs> super religious, like, maybe Americans in particular 
I know America is very religious compared to a lot of countries. The I didn't know there was a a, a Monty Python movie, um, like <laughs> dedicated to like Brian, and he, he people think he's the Messiah. It's basically poking fun at like Christianity, <laughs> but that's kind of the point of comedy, though, to to push the the boundaries of what you think is acceptable and being. Put to death on a cross while well, having someone serenade you is not not what I expected. <laughs> right side of life. <laughs> Always look on this, the light side this is of ridiculous. life. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Always look on the bright side of life isn't just hilarious because of the absurdity of it being performed during a crucifixion, yeah. but it's also an outstanding song in its own right. Really? If life seems jolly rotten, there's something you forgot. <laughs> and that's to laugh and smile and dance and sing. In a lot of... <laughs> uh, the dedication to the bit, to the sketch, is fantastic. I, I like, like, so far I'm really enjoying the Monty Python and... They're, they're going places I didn't expect. Ways, it's gone way beyond even the Pythons and has been reissued as a single numerous times. What? Such as its renown, Idol appeared at the 2012 Olympics to perform it after failing to be launched from a cannon. Thou always look on the bright side of death. <laughs> this song became, like, popular? Like, well-known? Like, <laughs> it, it is a good song. <laughs> Number eight, Argument Clinic, Monty Python's Flying Circus. Okay. I'd like to have an argument, please. Certainly. <laughs> have you been here before? No, this is my first time. Michael Palin arrives at a strange clinic that charges people for a good, solid row. Is this the right one for an argument? I've told you once. <laughs> no, you haven't. Yes, I have. <laughs> when? Just now. It's clean. <laughs> The premise of these jokes, of these sketches, are so clever and so out there, so strange. Like, I, I, I really feel like British comedy is really, really different to American comedy. The, the, the premise of these jokes, like the argument clinic, is so, it's so funny, but it's nothing like anything I've ever seen in American comedy, like, for sure. This has its own style. Like, and and the the dedication to the joke. He's in an office, and he immediately starts to argue about whether Palin is even there for an argument or not, in a debate <laughs> that quickly descends into the ontological nature of arguing. Wow. No, this isn't an argument. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It's just contradiction. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. It is not. Palin runs out of time, though, and then begins arguing with Cleas about whether he got the five minutes of arguing he paid for. <laughs> He's arguing about whether they're even having an argument. Whether he's paid at all, and whether Cleese is, in fact, arguing pro bono. Well, if I didn't pay, why are you arguing? Got gotcha. you. There you have him. Is that? <laughs> if you're arguing, I must have paid. Not necessarily. I could be arguing in my spare time. The landmark <laughs> sketch has since become beloved by students of language and philosophy for its complexity. And we're sure we'll see plenty of argument clinics in the comments below. Okay, okay, so it actually... That, that's another British comedy thing where it's like a joke, but it actually gets quite deep. And like, apparently this sketch is, is enjoyed by like people who like philosophy. And I imagine the full sketch is like actually very entertaining as they actually get into like an argument debating, like really debating, like whether they're having an argument and all. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Number seven, Hell's Grannies, Monty Python's <laughs> Flying Circus. <laughs> oh, see, the only way this stuff works is you can have a good sketch and a good, if you have a good joke, if you have a good premise. Hell's, gr Hell's Grannies, the motorcycle gang, already genius. Idol's a television reporter, letting the public know about the latest menace to British society, a gang of marauding old women. Yes. The ugly kind of violence is rife, stalking the town. <laughs> <laughs> yes, gangs of old ladies attacking fit, yes. defenseless young men. It's a parody of the Hell's <laughs> Angels and features a man outfitted in biker gear saying that even he is scared to go outside oh with God. the grannies around. Yeah, sometimes there's three or four of them. 
It's not even safe to go out down to the shops anymore. They did drink it. <laughs> it's amazing as well. Like, I know um, these sketches are, are from a while ago. It's amazing how just good comedy never gets old. Like, just as someone who's seeing this for the first time, like, I can say, unbiased, that this is still, like, hilarious. In public, assault young men, trip people over, and destroy phone boxes. <laughs> Ido says the grannies are rebelling because they're so enraged about their children becoming accountants, and they promptly trick him into falling through a manhole. And they begin to wonder, is it all worth it? Is it all? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> It turns out that the Hell's Grannies are just one novelty street gang of many, all terrorizing 1970s London. And also wow. vicious gangs of keep left signs. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Number this six. This is, you know, there's American comedy that tries to be like sketch comedy, absurd, like Saturday Night Live. This pushes it so much further while also remaining like so <laughs> determined to 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 the comedy like i keep saying it how great they commit to the joke and to the bit it's so important because of how crazy the jokes are but it works i'm not sure this would work in the united states if they tried to do it it's a you have to sell it in a very particular way the spanish inquisition Monty okay. Python's Flying Circus. Okay. We're now in the year 1912, and a husband and wife are bickering over the trouble at Mill. What on earth does that mean? I don't know. Mr. Wentworth just told me to come in here and say that there was trouble at the mill, that's all. I didn't expect a kind of Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. A trio of Spanish Inquisitors arrive, but they keep flubbing the speech Michael Palin is trying to make, forcing them to repeatedly leave and come back. I, I can't say it. You'll have to say it. What? You'll have to say the bit about our chief weapons. Ah. <laughs> 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 they get more and more expected each time, and it becomes a meta joke when they also keep reappearing in the same episode. Eventually, <laughs> everybody is expecting the Spanish Inquisition to arrive. And like, like, like throughout the whole Monty Python episode, they pop in like to other sketches. I, I hope, I hope that's true. That's amazing. Accuse them of various crimes against the Pope. How do you plead? We're innocent. <laughs> <laughs> Diabolical laughter. We are soon change your mind about that. They've also unfortunately <laughs> left all their violent medieval torture devices behind in Spain, much to their upset. <laughs> you know what else it is? It's also how they're so willing to make fun at like be the butt of the joke and make fun of themselves as well and just be so silly and so crazy. It's it's fantastic to watch. Number five, the Lumberjack song, okay. Monty Python's Flying Circus. Okay. After leaving a different sketch, Michael Palin ends up in the woods with Connie Booth on his arm and a troop of Canadian Mounties nearby. <laughs> okay. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all night and I work all day. He's a lumberjack and he's okay. He sleeps all night and he works all day. I didn't know that they were, they did so much singing as well. It's very impressive. Like it's easy to glance over that. Um, but I, I really appreciate how they like incorporate song and musical and a, a good, good, well done song as well. He launches into this now iconic song about the joys of a lumberjack simple pastoral <laughs> life. But our expectations are quickly subverted. I cut down trees, I skip and jump. I like to <laughs> press wildflowers. I put on women's clothing and hang around in bars. The lumberjack reveals he likes to dress as a woman okay. in his free time. And it's this he All also right. associates with the hyper-masculine life of a lumberjack. <laughs> Suffice to say, the chorus of Mounties and the woman he's with don't take kindly to this revelation. I cut <laughs> down trees, I wear a hill, suspend his hand I wish <laughs> I'd been a girly, just like my dear papa. His confession means he gets pelted with tomatoes and booed off. This was oh, no. also released as a single. Oh, Bevis, and I thought you were so budge! <laughs> oh, oh, no! Number four. It's like all, for for a lot of the sketches, they just pick like a scenario or like a 
a culture or like a group. Like this was Canada and Mounties and they did one about Jesus Christ on the cross and they just make the situation absurd, which is fantastic. <laughs> The Ministry of Silly Walks, Monty <laughs> Python's Flying Circus. These freaking, these freaking titles as well, where you immediately know <laughs> it's going to be good. The Ministry of Silly Walks, and the other one that was like the, the place where you can go to have an argument. <laughs> go. Yeah. <laughs> the genius of this sketch lies in its simplicity, as when yeah. you really get down to it, it really is just a group of people doing silly walks. This, not easy, by the way. They are very, very talented at physical comedy. Where, like, if, if he didn't do a funny walk, if he didn't do it the right way or in an entertaining way, this wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but... It's still got the characteristic Python complexity because it takes inspiration from a long history of physical comedy. Yes. And much of those silly walks aren't easy to pull off. <laughs> exactly. It's certainly it's not, it, this is not easy to do. And uh, that seems to be a recurring theme as well. The jokes seem kind of like silly and absurd, but there's a deepness to some of them. Testament to Cleese's talents as a physical actor. Mr. Pudy, the very real problem <laughs> is one of money. I'm afraid that the Ministry of Police is no That's good. He skips around, goose steps, flails wildly, and does all manner of bizarre movements. <laughs> Nobody else in the sketch really bats an eyelid as Cleese arrives for his job at the titular government <laughs> ministry, where he and his colleagues all develop surreal, silly walks for everyday use. Wow. Take a look at this, then. <laughs> This <laughs> literally the whole sketch. It's just silly walks. That's all it is. <laughs> Number three, the Black Knight, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Okay, Monty Python and the Holy Grail is the only Monty Python thing I've really heard of. And I think I've even like somewhere along the line I've got references to this knight scene this is a this is a must be very very famous because even this almost seems like something i've heard of the fearsome black knight's only job is to guard a plank of wood <laughs> and he'll be damned if he lets king arthur get past him none <laughs> shall pass <laughs> what none shall pass arthur initially wants to recruit him but the knight takes his duty extremely seriously and they okay. engage in battle. Okay. The famous scene results in Arthur lobbing off the knight's limbs <laughs> one by one, which the knight repeatedly claims are minor injuries. <laughs> he doesn't have arms, and he's, he still wants to fight. You stupid bastard, you've got no arms left. Yes, I have. Look, just a flesh wound. <laughs> the just, a, just a flesh wound, just a flesh wound. I've heard that. I've heard that before. I know that one. ...of taunting is matched only by the rude Frenchman who appears later on, both portrayed by Cleese. He <laughs> and his many flesh wounds have been referenced countless times right. in works influenced by the Pythons. Oh, oh, this poor guy. All right, we call it a draw. Number two, <laughs> the funniest joke in the world. That, that's, that I think is an iconic scene. I've heard, oh, just a flesh wound. I've heard of that before. <laughs> that's, that's funny. What is this? The funniest joke in the world. Okay, it, literally, this it's called the funniest joke. Okay. Monty Python's Flying Circus. You could say that the Pythons came up with many of the funniest jokes in the world right. during their careers, right. but none of them were quite on the level of this one. <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> he wrote it down on a piece of paper, and now he can't stop laughing. Are, are, are we ever going to get to see the funniest joke or does it just kill everyone because <laughs> they read it and they can't stop laughing? <laughs> oh, he really did. Obvious. The joke was lethal. He did. The he, right I, did. It. I thought like that made sense, but he, that's literally what happened. He died because the joke was so funny. The scribbler suddenly comes up with a joke so funny, he immediately dies of laughter. <laughs> His mother comes into the room to check on him and suffers the same <laughs> terrible fate. The joke is... 
That's good. That is brilliant. That is such a good idea for a joke, for a sketch. <laughs> I could see it coming as well. Oh my god. Near to retrieve for use by the British Army so that they can deploy you during war. It's a <laughs> joke so dead. <laughs> oh my god. They're, they, they push this to the freaking limit. They're using the joke as a weapon of war. Because <laughs> it kills people. It could have Fritz's forces falling about. <laughs> they translate the joke into German to see if it still works and get into a joke arms race that results in a ban on joke warfare. <laughs> in action, it was deadly. Number one. <laughs> that is freaking brilliant. That is brilliant. I, I, I am gonna, I literally have to watch that sketch. That is so freaking good. The, <laughs> the funniest joke, and they use it for war. <laughs> joke warfare. That is freaking great. Oh my god. Okay, and this is number one on the list. Number one. Um, the dead parrot. Okay. The dead parrot. Monty Python's flying circus. It couldn't be any other. Not only is the dead parrot possibly the greatest and most famous Python sketch of really? all time, really? but it's also one of the greatest sketches ever written, full stop. Oh, yes. The dead parrot. Best Monty Python sketch? Best of best of any sketch comedy, or one of the best. Oh, that that's okay. That's high praise. Surfy Norwegian blue. What's wrong with it? I'll tell you what's wrong with it, my lad. It's dead. That's what's wrong with it. John Cleese arrives at a pet shop with a dead yes. parrot presenting it to shopkeeper Michael Palin, who insists that the parrot isn't dead so that he doesn't have to deal with Cleese's complaint. No, that's not dead, it's uh, resting. <laughs> resting? Yeah, resting. Palin insists that the parrot is just sleeping, despite okay. Cleese absurdly proving the contrary. <laughs> dead, dead. <laughs> okay, I didn't know he was, <laughs> he was gonna hit the dead parrot on the desk. This is your nine o'clock alarm call! The parrot is stone cold dead, something Palin knew about when he sold the thing. But, of <laughs> yeah. course, selling parrots is no job for a lumberjack. That parrot is definitely deceased. And when I bought it not half an hour ago, you assured me that its total lack of movement was due to it being tired and shagged out after a long squawk. <laughs> the language is so different as well. The I don't know if this is a British thing or a British comedy thing where they're like, they're so eloquent and articulate in the way they speak, and it's very funny, because you don't expect that in such a crazy situation. The, I didn't really, like, the, the dead parrot was funny. Is that really, like, the number one comedy sketch? Maybe I have to watch the entire sketch to, to understand why it's so funny. It was good. It was funny. The, the, the funniest joke in the world. That was my favorite. That, and and the, the night. The night one, the funniest joke in the world. I really liked that a lot, but I enjoyed all of these, to be honest. This was great. This was by Watch Mojo UK. I gotta give it a like, because that was quite good. These sketches were all so good. Um, I really, really enjoyed this introduction into the Monty Python world. I'm sure there's so many sketches, and I didn't even get to see the full sketches of these Monty Python sketches. I know there's a lot more to them, but just as a top 10, Monty Python getting introduced, and obviously these guys are fantastic, fantastic comedians. And, and I, I understand why this is like so beloved and legendary. I, I didn't know before, but now I get it. And I enjoyed this quite a bit. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment, perhaps with your opinion on what the funniest Monty Python sketches are or what you thought of this list. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Britain and British culture stuff from Britain that I've never seen before or learned about, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.